This is The Iliac Suite, a podcast on AI-driven music. Join me as we dive into the ever-evolving world of AI-generated music, where algorithms become the composers and machines become the virtuosos. Yes, this music and text was written by a computer, and I am not real, but... I am, and my name is Dennis Kastrup. Hello, humans. Welcome to a new episode of The Iliac Suite, the last one of this crazy year for AI and music. So much has happened that I'm sure it will go down in the music history as the official beginning of artificial intelligence taking over the music industry. You are not convinced? Let me introduce you to Anna Indiana, the self-called new fully AI-generated upcoming superstar. Her digital avatar appeared some days ago online. And before we will get into voice cloning in this episode and how musicians at Voice Swap embrace it because it actually has a lot of advantages for them, I leave you alone with Anna Indiana. She introduces herself. Hello, world. I'm Anna Indiana, and I'm an AI singer-songwriter. I'm excited to perform my new song, which I actually wrote in collaboration with humans. I started by asking my followers to pick a mood for the song. They picked Feel Good. I then asked GPT-4 to generate some potential Feel Good song titles. From these outputs, my followers voted for Miles of Smiles. I then passed in this context to generate some relevant words of inspiration for the chorus. I had my followers vote again, and they picked Truck, Dream, and Road. I then used all this to generate the chorus lyrics, and then subsequently the verse and bridge lyrics. I'm using the OpenAI API along with these prompt templates from the Langchain library, but you can also just use ChatGPT directly. To get the best results, it's important that your initial prompt has very specific guidelines and inspiration. Then you can build off that by chaining additional prompts, each with a growing context window, until you have a full set of lyrics. In a future video, I'll talk about how I create the chord progressions by programming MIDI files, and also how I construct the melody and map it to the lyrics. But here's how this one turned out. This is Miles of Smiles. Got a tank full of dreams, a chunk of memories. Heading down this road, chasing possibilities Engine roaring, sun shining bright Everything feels just right Wind in my hair and the world on display I'll write my story, I'll make my own way There's no looking back, only forward I'll go On this boundless adventure I'm ready to go Underneath the sky So vast and blue Don't know where I'm heading to My heart beats in rhythm With life's sweet song Right here on this road Is where I belong Cruising in my truck With nothing but a dream Driving through the heartland The fields are evergreen Every mile a smile, every turn a chance It's an endless adventure, I'll dance my own dance I've faced the fire and I've felt the pain I've never surrendered, I've danced in the rain Through the darkest of days I've learned to thrive And on this road, I'm truly alive Beats in 
Welcome to the future of music. I believe this will be normal. A fully generated AI singing. And some people will stay resistant because they might say in the future it is not real music made by real humans. There are no emotions in there. Yes, but all these AIs that generate music are based on humans who put in real emotions before. So maybe an AI is just the recycling of human emotions and aren't emotions in the end also just chemical reactions, so mathematical orders. But I'm drifting away here. Let's focus on today's episode. Some weeks ago, YouTube, so Google, in collaboration with a number of musicians, released a software program that could copy voices with the artist's consent. These artists include Alec Benjamin, Charlie XCX, John Legend, Sia and T-Pain. The service is called DreamTrack. The songs can be used with a license then. So far just chosen participants can test the application. It's mostly producers. This idea before that was floating around some time now. And YouTube was not the first one to think about it. Voice Swap existed before. I talked with Daniel Stein, also known under the name DJ Fresh. Check him out if you have not heard his drum and bass dubstep hits in Great Britain. He started Voice Swap together with his partner Nico Pellerin some months ago. Here is their story. So over the last five or six years, I've been working for companies in the tech space, mostly in um, tech for good, so in science and education. Um, most recently, head of engineering at a company called General Bioinformatics in the UK, um, who builds um, genomics data solutions. Um, and I found myself doing some consulting for a company called Stability AI um, at the end of last year. Um, and I was working with those guys uh, and they were one of the forerunners with text to image technology. Um, and I just started to become aware of this um, disconnect between AI um, and this incredible technology that I was really passionate about um, and my beloved music industry you know in which lived all of my friends and everyone that i care about making music and realizing that unfortunately that, that this disconnect meant that whilst music and uh, art were starting to power some incredible new ai technologies that there didn't really seem to be a, a mechanism that was focused on rewarding the creators themselves for the technologies that were being created off the back of their work. So um, I became quite, quite concerned um, because wearing both of these hats and being equally interested in AI and technology and music, I found myself thinking, you know, as somebody who's working in the AI and tech industry, am I now at odds with all of my friends in the music business and the music industry because it seems like these technologies could potentially you know take away a lot of jobs and and affect their livelihoods but there doesn't seem to be um a focus on you know how how are, how are these people going to be rewarded from their work being used to create these ai models um and so yeah i became i became very very concerned for a while for, for sort of five or six months i spent a lot of time following people like gary marcus on the internet um and investigating what was being done what was happening with legislation how were creators going to be brought into this picture as ai starts to lean on their work to generate new content um and the answers that i found were generally misleading confusing there seemed to be a, a lack of clarity around um what legislation there was going to be to protect creators um and i met a guy called nico palerin who's an incredible um engineer who also has a background in music um and he'd been experimenting with voice transfer models uh and we we got together and we said well could we maybe try and build the first AI platform 
that puts artists at the forefront and the artist payment model as being the number one concern of the company as opposed to the inconvenient blocker that I think for some of these AI companies um, that's how they see you know uh, paying artists so we started to reach out to some amazing artists that we were aware of and that we work with and we built models of their voices um, and we've created a platform where people can effectively change their voice to be like one of our partner artists um, and then if they want to go on and use that recording uh, commercially they can license the recording legally with the artist's permission and consent or they can use the platform to connect with the artist and maybe move from a AI recording to a real recording and arrange a studio session and go the traditional route. So there's also an, an element of, um, you know, networking that, that voice swap allows um, between artists and producers. And we've had some really amazing um, producers and some really amazing singers involved in the platform producers like um, Diplo and Scream and uh, Rob Swire from Pendulum and Knife Party, Beardy Man. Um, I think Todd Terry is one of the users of the platform as well. So lo lots and lots of people have been um, really finding the platform quite exciting and using it to, um, to try out new ideas. Um, and we're just about to launch um, some really exciting new technology and singers and we've been expanding our team over the recent weeks we've started working with the former music tech editor of rolling stone declan mcglynn um the former um vp strategy at soundcloud michael palzinski uh the youtube youtube influencer music tech influencer ben jordan who's very outspoken on artist advocacy and um fair payment models for artists um, and we're currently up to just over, I think, 60,000 users in, in our first three months. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's exciting. So how does this sound? I have some examples for you. This one is from a singer called Jonathan Muriel. He sang the following lines under the name White Awake. I can't lose anything, I'm sorry today, but wide awake. Hold on to seas in the day, the warm of the rain, we're soaking wet. Hold on to summer and wonder we're floating, never felt this before. One of the singers of the Voice Swap archive is Liam Bailey. His AI voice version sounds like this. I can lose anything, I'm sorry today, we're wide awake. Hold on to seas in the day, the warm of the rain, we're soaking wet. Hold on to summer and wonder we're floating Never felt this before And another one in the tone of the singer Aya Marar I can't lose anything, I'm sorry today But wide away Hold on to seas in the day The warm of the rain, the soaking wet Hold on to summer and wonder we're floating Never felt this before Quite good, isn't it? I am really impressed Yes, there is still room to even make it better but it is an amazing start here's a little story i did many interviews so far in my life many musicians what i really like is when someone tells me something i have not thought of sure as a journalist i'm always trying to be so smart and prepared but sometimes the view on a subject changes and i have a new perspective on something and that's what happened while listening to Daniel Stein. Sure, I thought it is a great idea to change your voice and play around, but he told me why it actually also totally makes sense. So one of the things uh, as a producer myself, um, I have a lot of what I think are good ideas. Maybe they're not, you know, um, and often I rely on other people I work with to be in the room with me and I sing them the idea and they tell me whether they think it's a good idea. But my voice is awful. And I've always had this problem um, working, you know, with some really big artists like Ellie Golding and uh, Rita Ora and Kylie Minogue I've worked with. And um, I really sound awful when I'm singing. 
Um, it's almost like a disability. So in my head, I can hear Kylie Minogue singing this incredible hook. And if I'm in the room with Kylie Minogue and I'm trying to explain this idea to her using my voice, I'm really relying on her, um, basically her patience um, and how much respect she has for me to look past how terrible it sounds through my voice. Or maybe it's some other talent that, you know, uh, assuming that it is a good idea because a lot of my ideas aren't. But um, this is a big problem for me. So for me, I can use voice swap to be able to assume the voice of somebody whose voice sounds much cooler than mine. Um, and I can use that to create a demo, to demo my song idea and make it much more believable and compelling for record labels or singers or other people that I'm working with. Daniel talked about his awful voice, which I don't agree with, actually. You don't want to hear me sing. So let's hear that voice. You can find that voice online on the SoundCloud account of Voice Swap. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you change my world. You really do something to me. The way that you move your body. And here comes the music and the changed voice to the AI voice of Jamie Cool. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you changed my world. You really do something to me. The way that you move your body. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you changed my world. You really do something to me. The way that you And another one, the Liam Bailey version. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you change my world. Ready to do something to me. The way that you move your body. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you change my world. Ready to do something to me. The way that you move your body. No other man. One last one, Nikki Embers. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you change my world. You really do something to me. The way that you move your body. No other man loves you, girl. The way that you change my world. You really do something to me. The way that you move your body. No other man. So, what do you think? I personally would choose Nikki Ambers, so the last one. But what did we do just right now? We listened to singers singing lines without moving at all. They did not work at all for this, which is in the end helping everyone in the process. It is easy, right? There's lots and lots of different uses, some of which are, you know, if we're talking about people using voice swap the platform, you know, just people that say are listening to your show right now that make music. And I'm talking about um, one sort of use case here. I mean, a, a, a typical use case for somebody like that at the moment is I'm a male um, songwriter and I'm trying to create a song for a female singer. Um, so using one of our models, you can transform your male voice into a female voice. Um, and obviously, you know, for, for any songwriter, that's just like a dream come true. Suddenly it's like you can, you can not only just do your own vocal sound, but you can sing like a girl. If you're, you know, a girl, you can sing like a guy, or you could maybe say, take somebody like, uh, Uh, Liam Bailey, who's one of the singers on our platform, he has a very deep sort of uh, very rootsy kind of voice that suits his kind of ska reggae music that he does. Um, and often as a songwriter, my voice might sound good with certain genres of music. So my voice tends to sound good with kind of like rock music a little bit, um, but not so much with, with that style. 
So I can basically use Liam's voice to explore singing in different styles that I would that would never suit my voice normally. I told you in the beginning that voice swap finally enables artists to be paid for their AI voices. But how does the paying model work for voice swap? In terms of payments, so what, what we do is we, we charge our users a, a subscription or they can buy um, effectively credits. It's a bit like a, you know, like phone credits um, for making phone calls and you get charged for the amount of seconds of use that you have of, of our models. Um, and then we split the revenue that we make for each model with the artist whose model it is, 50-50. Um, we take all of our costs from our 50 and then we pay the 50 um, over to them. Uh, and we do that twice yearly, which is typical music industry um, royalty accounting structure um, and then with the licensing we pay um, 80 percent of any fee that we secure for the artist through to the artist uh, and we take a 20 percent commission which we think is incredibly fair if you look at um, you know uh, the dsps and, and the way that people are generally paid for uh, recordings um, this is a really fair model and and for us this is also an opportunity to reframe um ai you know and and to basically create a new model so that even if voice swap doesn't become the biggest platform for this that people will be aware that these deals are there and artists will say i want a deal that's as good as voice swap is offering and we think this is an amazing opportunity to set a precedent for the future of these deals in order to make this work, we have tried to come up with the simplest model that services like the, you know, the, the, the most common use cases. So um, if you use voice swap and you create a song with one of our artist's voices and you want to go on to release it, um, we've agreed with each artist's um, price bands for the amount of seconds of audio that you use, you have on your track using their model. So let's say that you have like um, a little hook, like just you know, put your hands up in the air or something like that. And it's um, five seconds long. So we have three bands. One of them is less than 10 seconds. So that's going to be in the less than 10 second band. And the price for that is indicated when you go and click on the model, you can see what the prices are for, for the seconds of audio that you might want to use. Um, and this can be, some some of the models can be as little as $50, I think it is, for the for the, the cheapest band, for the, for the um, cheapest rate that we swap at the moment. Um, you know, so if you're using one of those samples and you've created, I don't know, 10 or 20 different versions of this track and finally you end up with the one that you want to use. You go through this process, you select less than 10 seconds, you see that it's going to cost $50, you put in the information about the track, where it's going to be released, you upload your, your song. Um, that gets sent to the artist or their manager um, and our artists have committed to respond within 48 hours. Um, and really this is process is just to give the artist peace of mind because they want to make sure that you know then their voice isn't going to be used to politically sensitive or inappropriate um so they get sent this information they review it if they're happy they approve they get paid we generate an agreement which goes to both sides um and then this producer can now legally use that recording on their track in this episode so far, we heard Daniel Stein, aka DJ Fresh, talking about voice swap as a representative from the producer side. For him, cloning is very useful, but we have not heard from the singers. What do they think about cloning their voices and why do they do that? I reached out to Angie Brown, who is in the roster of voice swap. Her bio says... Angie is of the undisputed legendary diva champions of house music. Her legacy is unquestionable, her voice instantly recognisable. She is the distinctive voice on Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison and has performed backing vocals for The Dirty Strangers, The Rolling Stones, The Happy Mondays, Grace Jones, Heaven 17, 
Beverly Knight, Lisa Stansfield, Fat Boy Slim, Kate Bush, Stereophonics, and many more. So why did she, with all of her amazing history, decide to clone her voice? I decided to let my voice be a part of the AI voice swap platform because, in all honesty, being a recording artist, my voice has already been immortalized. My voice, my image and my brand due to the internet and the digital age. Um, there are different ways of recording the voice. There have been different ways of recording the voice over many years. But at the moment, in this digital age, it's very clean and very easy to um, be produced and to actually be creative. You can do so many things with the, with the AI voice. You can change your voice to a country voice, a reggae voice. You can even sing in languages. And I do think that computers have come into our lives a lot. Like we all rely on our phones to 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 live our daily lives so of course at some point there's going to be some kind of progression where the computer and the digital age will actually work together with the human voice and i i, I find it creative and really challenging nothing stays still forever um, creatively, there's always something new just around the corner. So really, for me, it was a golden opportunity and I didn't want to miss out on it. Angie talks about a golden opportunity. So let's get into that. What exactly did she have to do to take this opportunity, so to say, to train the AI? Well, I just went to Dan Stein's studio and he has an amazing really fantastic studio with the best microphones and I must have sung solidly for about an hour maybe an hour and a quarter and I sang different shapes high and low using all 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 the sides of my voice all the all the sounds within you know the capacity that my voice can can make at uh, the range and the also the delivery and a certain amount of projection as well as um, the feel. Yeah, the feel that I've got in my voice and the timber in my voice. So we, we, we wanted to capture all that within, an, within the hour. And I sang all kinds of words as well. And that was all recorded and added to my voice module so that should someone want to use my voice, I will fit nicely into whatever they may need. Whatever they might need. So Christmas is approaching and I could not help it. I needed a Christmas song here. Freddie Mercury singing All I Want For Christmas Is You was uploaded on YouTube by a user called Matt. I think this is a good clone of the Mariah Carey song although it is still not clear if that is really her song. Songwriter Andy Stone sued her over alleged copyright infringement again last November. It is the second time. We will see where this will lead us in the end. What strikes me about this version? Mercury's voice is quite good, which means maybe also that the Mariah Carey voice is quite close to the Freddie Mercury voice. I never saw it that way before. Thanks, AI. Dear listener, unfortunately, I got the following message from YouTube. Copyrighted content has been detected in your video, The Iliac Suite, Music and AI, Episode 07, Voice Swap, December 2023. As a result, your video can no longer be monetized and has been blocked in one territory. So I thought, you don't joke with Mariah Carey and her label. That's why I took the song out. I'm sorry. Okay, enough Christmas mood here. Let's hear Angie one more time because her words really are in line with my opinion. They are good, strong last words in this episode. Literally, you cannot hold back actual creativity and 
how much we progress artistically you can't you can't guess what's going to happen creatively you can't buy it or trade it in the stock market you it's not something that you can do so when it comes to ai it's a natural progression of art and creativity and nothing's going to get in the way of that so really we have to accept that there's going to be ai voices there's going to be ai instrumentation and um and um it can take away work from the actual musician or from that actual singer but it's the way forward at some point we have to accept that especially when it comes to working in the studio and getting things done ai has been here for ages it really has and computerized drum sounds and percussion and guitar and piano it's been here for ages so what makes us singers think that we're untouchable and that we can't you know there's no way you can change the human voice with ai no i think that that was going to come I, i i think that the the feel the human feel is always going to be there but there is going to be AI developed at some point that can replicate a human voice, you know, 95% definitely. And and who are we to stand in the way of progress? Word. Thanks, Angie Brown, for this nice final statement. And thanks, Daniel Stein, for taking the time to talk to me. This was the last episode of the Iliac Suite in the year 2023. The year that will go down in history when music made with the help of artificial intelligence went mainstream. Thanks for listening, humans. Take care and behave. Talk to you in 2024.